so pretty. Everything was set up, looked all nice, and one little breeze and poof, all gone. That's fine, that's the nature of things this time of year. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, hot. It's very hot, I'm glad I have my fan. I'm gonna be using this a lot in this video. Time for a garden tour. It's not a very well lit one. I had to wait till later in the day for the temperatures to cool off. When it's in the mid upper 90s like it is right now, things just overheat by things, I mean, the camera. So, so, so fast. So I had to, yeah, I had to wait for the sun to go away. And then it was also raining and you know, all those things. This is when I can make it happen. That's fine, I'm just gonna go with it. So there's the, here you go. There it is. There's the garden. Was that fun? Uh, I can do better than that. It should start off before I forget, because I always forget that this lovely shot of the mimosa tree. Such a stunner. Love that tree. Needs a prune. Tricky trees to prune on. Getting the timing right, that is, because they only bloom on new growth. So, uh, or no, opposite. Forget that. They only bloom on old growth. That's what I meant to say. So anything that gets pruned off of them, they'll put out new growth, and then that growth isn't going to bloom again until the next year. So uh, I typically wait and prune till like right after they're done flowering and then they have a few months to push out some new growth and then hopefully that new growth is mature enough by the next summer to bloom. It all just depends on when it blooms for me. The mimosa is supposed to bloom <laughs> around mid-June is when it's supposed to start doing its thing early to mid-June, but it got a real late start this year. This tree didn't even push anything out until mid to late May. Very, very, very late. I was wondering if it was dead. I'm glad that it wasn't. So because of that, it's also still pretty far. Like, th this is the peak of its blooming, which usually it's done this by mid to early July. So it's been fun having some extra time with the flowers on the trees. I'm sorry, this is so distracting. That's what he does. He's having a great time, loving his life right now. So maybe this won't be the year for a trim on it. Maybe I waited too long. I don't know. I, it just it needs to come back about eight to ten feet from up there because down below, it's just it's very messy. I don't want it overhanging the pool and it's shading things more than I would like it to over in this area. But it's, that's not the. It looks great though, doesn't it? That should be the main point here. Is I thought it was dead and it's not. <laughs> you probably talked about that in the last garden tour. It would have made more sense to talk about that at that time. Everything else out here has been doing very well. I'm not seeing a ton of growth compared to most years. Usually the July garden tour is when I say, okay, this is it. Everything is at its peak. Take it all in. But I'm actually thinking that's probably going to be the August garden tour this year. And that's for a few different reasons. Partially because I got some of the planters planted up a little bit later than normal this year. Not all of them, but the like the hydrangea planters, I didn't do those till mid to late June. So they haven't even been going all that long. And uh, some things like what's in the ground over here, I did right about when I normally do. So they're kind of at their max right now. They're in that area where it won't be too long until they start to fizzle out and not look as good. And you have planters like the Miami planters, where I didn't really finish these up until three weeks ago. It's <laughs> partially because I was waiting for certain plants to come in the mail. So that's something new that's happened out here. I got some bromeliads placed into these planters. These are the Yangs, I believe, Neurogelia Yang. They're a medium to full sun bromeliad, and uh, they showed up just looking terrible. They sat in the mail for about three weeks, maybe even four weeks. I ordered them early June. And they didn't show up here until late June. I don't know what that was about. So they got held up in the mail for some reason. So they looked pretty bad. But I think they've recovered very well. They look a lot better than they did when I first got them. I've come in and cut a lot of the crispy stuff out. There's still some of it in there. Overall, looking better. When these start to get the right lighting, they get a good amount of pink in them. So these didn't have any pink when they showed up. But they're both starting to get a lot more colorful. The variegated fry deck is just looking so good. Love this alocasia. I'm nowhere near as vigorous as a regular fried egg though. That's one thing I've noticed with this. And that could partially be because it's just its first year going. You know, this was started from a tissue culture plug last winter. So it hasn't really gotten to its big moving and grooving growth point yet. But I imagine after a couple more leaves, it should be about up here and looking pretty good. I don't think there's anything else 
Oh yeah, there are. I have some little Lismachias that I started in a video from cuttings. They aren't doing much, but it's been a couple weeks and still green. So that means they're alive and they survived the process. In that video I talked about how it just was not the right time of year to be... <laughs> drop my fan. To be taking cuttings and trying to start them outside because it was so hot. So it's pretty risky, but if anything can handle it, it's Lismachia. So it looks like those are doing okay. The Adenidia palms, they're loving life. Looking really good. I know there's some brown stuff up there on the foliage. That's normal. It's just aging out leaves. So in a couple weeks, this will be brown all the way down to the bottom. That'll pop off. There'll be a new ring there on the trunk. I think this one right here is probably also going to go fairly quickly too. So out of this one, I've already gotten three rings off of this trunk since it showed up here. And then the other one... Yeah, only two on this one and one over here. This Adenidia doesn't get quite as much light as that other one does, so it is a little bit more slow to grow. You can even see how they have a different growth habit to them altogether, just from that little difference in light. I know that the brown, bronzy, dried up leaves don't look good, but it really is best to leave them on there as long as you can to let these get nice and brown and let them clean themselves off because the palm tree's taken everything back that it doesn't want in that leaf anymore and it'll shed it on its own. So that's why I like to leave those on there. The canary wing begonias flushing out. I love that chartreuse green. I wasn't sure how they were gonna do over here because there's a lot of shade, but it looks like it's doing really, really, really well in that spot. As are the Crossandras. I think I need to come over here and deadhead that one. But this one over here, I think it's looking pretty good. I don't I think I need to do any deadheading. I should. I haven't deadheaded it yet, but it's still growing and putting up new bloom, so I don't really need to worry about it. I love the orange on the Chrysandra. I thought I had the suns on my screen. You can't even see it. There it is. Orange flowers. I think this one, yeah, this one I need to come in and do some deadheading on. I need to come in and pull these guys out. Those long, wispy things, those are done. Tie Giant looking good. This is a weird Thai giant. It's very wilty and I don't, it's just, it's always been that way. Always this year. So it's pretty much only been the oldest leaf on the plant. So that one, very floppy and wilty. Then the next one that came out after that one, not as wilty and floppy. And then the new one, which you can't really see, it's up there with the Borneo giant. It's not doing that, so I don't know. Maybe that was just a phase it was going through. Usually when you see that, you go, oh, it needs water, but the soil's moist. I stick my finger down in there, and it's fine, so I don't know. But it's been happy and healthy. It has an inflorescence coming up on the inside there. You can kind of see it. been debating whether or not to cut it out. It takes a lot of energy out of the plant, but it's also fun to look at, so I'll probably let it hang out for another week or so. The Borneo Giants... They're horribly backlit right now, but look at how big they are. These things are absolutely huge. They're well over seven and a half, maybe pushing eight feet tall. The one over here is much taller than this one. Each one of those leaves of the newest leaves are easily four feet long and probably three feet wide. Remember, those were just started from little, was, I think they're in 10 inch containers. They were not even two feet tall when they got put in the ground. I'm so happy with how well those have done, this lighting. Hopefully it'll look better on the camera than it looks to me, because all I can see is a black screen. That's not great, right? Wanna be able to see what filming over here. Up here, I've got a wall of yews. <laughs> oh, they were meant to be planted before I even filmed this video, but just hadn't gotten around to it yet. So I have two different types of yews here. I picked these up on clearance. These are Hixia yews. Those are going to be going in with some more Hixia yews that are on the other side of that laurel hedge over there. It's just my fail-safe hedge so that if the laurels ever have a bad winter and die off, then there's still something back there behind them for some added privacy. And then the hilly I use, which are these right here, which stay smaller than the hixie I use, I'm going to plant those in kind of a zigzag right up here to help add some privacy from the neighbor's house. Not too much, just want to be able to see through it. They're nice people, like, not trying to make them vanish or anything, but just for winter interest and everything, it would be nice have some more evergreens out here. You can see the lovely field of impatience that I planted up here. There's some weeds in there. I didn't, I didn't know. I had a hedge, shrubs right in front of them. But 
whole point there was the impatience are doing very well they keep going they go all the way back there i also planted some curcumas up here from the tuber and i wasn't sure if they were going to do anything so a good six weeks had passed and didn't see anything but as of two days ago they started shooting up some leaves there's not much there but there's some right there and some right there so at least two of those survived and i think i did put some on the other side too i think yeah i did so there's two more over here or just one two there's one right here it's just a leaf right now and then this one right here not going to expect too much out of those this year but eventually someday those corms will get bigger more developed and they'll look a lot better the first year not going to get a lot out of them oh the hydrangeas this is exciting these are oh, little lime punch i think can you guys see i can't see it do you see what that tag says i can't reach it gonna go with little lime punch had these in the ground for two years now haven't had any blooms out of them that well three years this is their third year but i got some flowers and they look great too uh, hopefully next year it'll be even more full I don't know why they hadn't bloomed the last couple of years. The first year I kind of understood because it was their first year in the ground. Uh, but last year, I don't I don't know why they didn't bloom. My best guess would be is that I have been much better about watering over here than I used to be because I don't have the drip set up. I used to have everything run with drip out here and I haven't set the drip back up since I had to tear it all apart to get the new paving done out here for the patio this past spring, winter, whenever that was. So chances are the drip that I had running up here wasn't that great. I'm almost positive that that's the case, actually, because I know that I paid attention to the drip that ran to the pots. I never really went up here on the hill and checked how that drip was doing, so that's on me. They probably just weren't being watered, whereas now they're getting hand-watered and doing very well. I also found a sprinkler head when uh, trying to dig things up up here on the hill that I didn't know was there. It turns out there's a sprinkler head right there, so I dug that up, cleaned it up, and that's been helping keep things watered over here. All this time. Never knew there was a sprinkler head there. Found another sprinkler head down over here at the end of that berm too. Didn't know it was there. So that's been fun, just finding new sprinkler heads all over the place. I ended up having a bare spot with the impatience in here because of the turbo. Yep, you did it. Your fault. I'm blaming you, turbo. For some reason, he just, he loves to run through here. I don't know why. Path right there, but he likes to go through here so I've set some pothos and things up to make kind of a plant wall and that has stopped him but end up having a bare spot here so I just set a begonia in there I can't remember what type it is I picked it up last year and it was in a video it's in a plant hall but I've forgotten it has really pretty kind of an orangey red flower that hangs in tight to the foliage in there I didn't even have the camera point what I was talking about but when it flowers it's very pretty very profuse flower uh, we had some flooding out here. That's probably what I should have started with for the people who only pop in for the garden tours. Uh, about two weeks ago, we had a couple inches of rain in about two hours, two and a half hours, and all these houses up here drain to this yard right here. I have drains there, there's drains up the hill, there's French drains in here that all run to a storm sewer on the other side of the yard. But that just, it wasn't enough to handle that kind of rain, so this was all underwater, only by like half an inch to my knowledge i don't know i didn't come out here while it was raining just right after just like sprinkling and a lot of the water had receded at that point turned the pool brown that was an adventure getting that cleaned up and uh, washed a lot of things out over here but for the most part things have started to come back up some of the impatience that were over here were very flat and sad looking but they've come back up i have one fatality it's a begonia I think it just got way too wet. Who's the... Really? It's 6.15. I waited so late so it would be quiet and not so hot outside. And we got somebody with a leaf blower. Only reason I'm confused about that is because their lawn care company was just here two days ago. So what, what are they doing? Why are they back? That's fine. It's a garden tour. If we're outside, there's going to be garden noises. So yeah, that was it. One plant didn't make it, and it was that begonia down there. I think it just got too wet and rotted. I probably should have pulled it from its container and done something with it, but I just didn't know. I didn't think about that. I was preoccupied with getting all the mud and everything off the patio and getting all the pipes unclogged and liner cleaned up mostly with the pool. So I don't know. Oops. Sorry, begonia. The little tychospermas are looking good. Got these last winter. There's that one right there. I have another one over here. 
they had a hard time adjusting to being outside. It took them a long time, but they're looking a lot better now. Have some new growth coming out of them. They have the stinking cutest little trunks. There's not much to it, but they're cute. And look at that inflorescence. Like, what even is that? What are those tiny little things? Sorry, I shouldn't size shame the inflorescence on the palm trees, but you gotta admit, it's kind of tiny and pathetic. Oh, the acanthus. It, I don't know why I said it like that. They're, they're still here. There's nothing to report on. <laughs> Except this one back here has got a flower spike on it. Kind of late to the game, but better late than never. I don't know what else to say about them other than I'm very happy with those purchases and I'm glad they're in the ground. I hope that they do well moving forward in the garden. The rest of the impatiens are looking pretty good. The game changer hydrangeas, they have had a bit of a lull. I'm hoping that they're going to pick up their game, <laughs> so to say, speak. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I just think then that there may not be enough flight here for them. Gonna have to get some more time and see. I was hoping that there would be a lot more going on with them flower wise, but uh, like I said, I think it might just be too dark over here. You can see when they do flower, it's absolutely beautiful, but uh, eh, I don't know. I don't want to waste the space on things that aren't gonna flower. Seems like a bad idea, but I'm gonna give them, you know, the year and see what I decide on them. They're not doing their thing within a few more weeks, then next year I'll be digging them up and moving them somewhere else. There's that sprinkler head that I didn't know was there. Really glad that I found that because this whole area has been bone dry. I've been having to water the heck out of this because the sprinkler head that is here that I knew was right here is right there, right in front of me. And it only pops up like this far out of the ground and it just doesn't get anything over here. So something I talked about at the end of my last video, the last vlog, was how I had, you can see this black line right here. I tapped into the sprinkler system over here. That's why the hose is raised up. To, to refill the pool, essentially. That way I wasn't running the hoses in the pool 24 hours and I could have, well, it didn't take 24 hours, you know what I mean? So that I could set it to a timer and not worry about forgetting about anything that's running. And when this is on, when the sprinkler system's on, that runs through a booster pump. So it doesn't affect the water pressure in the house. With everything that's going on in the pool, the amount of mud that was in there is being drained and refilled and drained and refilled, not all the way, just partially water changes. And so you, you couldn't shower or anything while doing that because there's no water pressure. I mean, you could, but it takes a long time to get yourself clean when the water's just trickling. So when I did this, I realized that I think it would be a good idea to take this line and expand it. I'm going to attempt to run it from this area over here all the way up this berm, up the hill, back there behind the hill, all the way back to the other side and run drip off of that one line. I'm sure there's not gonna be enough water pressure to get everything that I would want to have on drip set up to it, but it should be enough to uh, handle the bulk of things. I've had a lot of issues keeping things watered on this end of the berm. Like you can see this poor laurel. We had tons of rain today and it's just, it's bone dry. This one, why is it not? There we go, that one. It's not looking good. The ewes that I planted over here, they're dead. There just isn't enough water for them. So uh, doing this will allow me to customize the watering more easily and it'll all be on my phone. I won't have to use those obnoxious timers that only last a year, three years max. Just be able to take out my phone, push a few buttons and get everything watered the way that they should be watered. It's going to be a game changer assuming that there's enough water pressure. And if there's not, that's okay because I have more lines down there I can tap into to bring things up halfway. So I'm gonna make it work somehow. Things are looking pretty good over here. This area has been through it though. That flooding we had really washed everything out over here with the impatience. They're bouncing back up. This hibis... Oh, oh, that looked so pretty this morning. I knew I should have taken a picture of it. Well, this hibiscus was covered in beautiful flowers. It still is, but they've closed up. It rained and stormed and they said, the heck with it. They're going to die off now but it has been very prolific. Lots and lots of flowers out of pretty much all the hibiscuses here, actually. The diamond head colocasia, look at it. What a beautiful colocasia. The form that it has, that nice round form, I absolutely love it. I'm not nuts about the color, but I am pretty crazy about the size and the growth habit. It has a tidy habit for a colocasia. So I think it can stay. I wasn't sure I thought about removing it because it's blocking all the impatience. I planted hundreds of impatience in here and you can't even see them, but I, like when you look through here, doesn't that look beautiful with the little bits of the impatience that you can see? I think it does. Yeah, it's looking good. Oh, the Alexander palm. 
it's been great. It's thrown up new growth constantly. It's spitting leaves out all over the place. It's been dropping great big old foliage on the patio. I think I'm going to cut that inflorescence off. I just need to find my pulse off, my tree pruner, to get up there and get that done. This just sucking energy out of the plant. I have learned, now that this has been such a prolific bloomer, that it's a very messy thing. Palm trees, when they bloom, very messy. Like, there's just gunk on the patio pretty much at all times when those inflorescences are growing. So I think I'm probably going to prune that off because of that. There's no reason to keep it. I'm not going to start the seeds. So may as well cut it off, right? Ty Giant. Do, uh, nope. Constellation. A new leaf. Look at it. Is it a pretty one? Lots of variegation on there. It's doing its thing. It's growing. I love that plant. I'm happy that it's picked up its variegation. The hydrangeas. Are these super? Can you guys even see? I can't see anything right now. Can you see it? Yeah. Camera overheated anyway, so it didn't matter. Had to get out of the sunlight. There they are. They're looking great, right? Uh, I will go back over there, I promise. I'm just going to hang out here in the shade and talk about what's going on over here while the sun works their way off of the impatience. Not a lot has happened over here. I just stuck random annuals for the most part down around these bamboo planters. I put some impatience in these pots just a few days ago. It was in the last video. Just got an eight pack at the Home Depot and split that up. Or no, I got two eight packs. So there's pink and orange in both of these bamboo planters. They've become difficult to plant up because they're so incredibly full of mosquitoes. If you see the camera start doing this and hear me smacking, that's trying to get mosquitoes off myself. Uh, they're so full that I can't put gallon size or even four inch pot size annuals in these anymore. Whatever goes into them needs to be something that comes in a six pack or an eight pack, something with a small cell on it because it doesn't have that small cell, then they uh, don't fit. There's just too much root in the container. So they'll grow, they'll fill out, they'll look better over time. I didn't give this spot the attention that I usually give it this year because I was focusing the majority of my energy and attention on all of this over here, which is new if you are only here for the garden tours. This wasn't here last month, so this is all new. Furniture, rugs, and uh, I really like it. Gotten a lot of use out of it. It's comfortable. It's the only thing I could find that would fit in this spot that met all of my needs. This is a sectional, so it pulls apart, which is useful for being able to get back there into that cabinet. Pardon the mess. I started to put the hose away for the garden tour, and then I was like, eh, y'all are gardeners. You get it. It's fine. So I'm going to be using it a lot over the next few days, and it's hard to put that away and pull it back out. So I just left it there for right now. This is all pretty inexpensive furniture that I managed to find on Amazon. It's got a couple swivel rockers. This is actually a three-piece sofa, and uh, it doesn't really fit there all that well as a three-piece sofa. So I took the middle piece out, and it's over by the Eureka Palm. And right now it's, it's all kind of messy. I had it set up, and it was looking good for a while, and then you know, life happened. Fertilizers and things sitting up here. There we go. It's also, it makes it so much easier to create the illusion of clean when I have something I can just throw things behind when I need to film a video. Uh, the furniture was a big deal to me. So this is something that just finishes off this area. I have for many, 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 many years wanted to get something over here that was small to fit the area and cozy and have the plants surrounding everything. It's very nice having that over in that spot. Because remember, prior to this, there was a bistro set, a two-piece bistro set, and just a pile of recycling and junk that I didn't know what to do with. And I was forced to figure that out when the patio got repaved this spring, late winter, early spring, whenever that was, and got that area cleared out and gutted, which made room for the new furniture. And that, along with the new step and the that nice mule post right there, this is, it's been in my mind for so many years to get this done in this spot this entire thing so it's just it makes me happy it looks really good i've added some um hanging baskets just a few three of them dichondra looking beautiful with some vinca right above it doing my best to not smother it that's my issue with dichondra is that i tend to over love it so i'm telling myself remember to actually check the soil make sure that it's getting near dry before watering it because you know these are potted up in the really peaty mixes when you buy the pre-made hanging baskets that is it's usually something that's very absorbent and moisture retentive so it's easy to overwater them 
I've been pretty good so far. If there have been a couple occasions where I watered them, then I stood back and I was like, eh, I don't know if I needed to do that, but it's been warm enough that they're doing okay with it. So I think that the last garden tour was when I decided to put this Adenidia palm here. It traditionally has always been over there where the bamboo is. And uh, I have decided that I really like that decision. I think it looks really good in this spot. Don't you? What do we think? Good view. I like it. The dichondra kind of hides that second trunk. These poles are adjustable, the hooks that those are on. So I could just give that a little, maybe nudge this direction and that would open it up. Because I actually don't know. I think that it might be pushing on the palm tree just a little bit, which isn't good for it. I should probably check that out. I just now noticed that. But yeah, there's that dichondra. Got another one hung up right here. So when you come out the door, you're just surrounded by the flowers. It looks beautiful from inside the house. And then the other one that's, well, you can't see it. Hopefully you saw it before, over here on the other side of this windmill palm. And behind the, I almost said windmill palm, behind the dichondra and the banana, the passion vine is very, very, very happy. Look at it. I mean, it's going all the way up there. I just put this second piece of trellis on there a few days ago, and it's already almost, <laughs> would almost be to the top, except that, no surprise here, it's decided to grab onto the dichondra. Uh, like I said, not surprising, but wish that I had thought about that before putting that right there, but that's okay. I guess I'll just have to maybe adjust this so it sticks out further, or I could just go up there and push the vine back into the trellis. That would work just as well. The uh, windmill palm that was repotted in July uh, it hasn't done a lot. It's only been a month and it's a windmill palm, but it does seem to appreciate it. I have noticed that the crown has started to flare out some more, and it's opening up its spears faster than it was before too that it's finally able to get water for a change oh yeah i know these look like garbage they were in the same shipment as those yang bromeliads that's why they're not looking very good these are the donnas they're supposed to be really nice and pink in the middle and then green on the outside but well they sat in a package for nearly a month so this, <laughs> this is what they look like they're looking better it just yeah, takes some time musa no no beautiful pink Lots of pink on the leaves. There's even a uh, kind of a glittery sheen that I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. But it has sparkle in it, which is something I've never seen on a banana leaf before. Yeah, the sun's not... You can kind of see where it is. I don't know, on camera it just looks like spider mites. It's not. I check. I check on a regular basis. I think that this actually might be ready for a repot. This and the Musa Florida. In fact, I have the Musa Florida sitting over here because it's definitely ready for a repot and it needed some more shade with the heat that we're having, so it's going to get bumped up into something larger here pretty soon. It has taken very well to being repotted, which I think happened back in, what was it, May? Something like that. It was just in a little 6-inch pot bumped up to a 10-inch, and now is when I need to go ahead and move it up to probably, I'd say, a 12 or 15-gallon no, that's probably a bit extreme. I could probably bump it up into a five gallon. That'd be good. Those things where you want to get it done in time so it has a couple of months to start to develop and set it, set it, <laughs> settle itself into the new container. And that will make it easier to get it through the next winter. If I were to keep that in that 10 inch container over there, I decided to come over here and finish that thought because my neighbor came out. So we're like 15 feet apart. It got awkward. Then uh, it would struggle through the winter because it's going to be much more root bound. So... If I get that repotted right around now, still has the heat and all the time it needs to adjust itself to being in a larger container and to start to get rooted in that pot, but not become so rooted that I can't keep the dang thing hydrated come winter time when it's in the grow space. Over here, everything is looking, oh, it looks so good. There's so much color. I'm loving the way the sun impatience came out, especially with the sweet potato vines in front of them. It's just, it's, it's that wall of color. It's, every time I look over here, it makes me so happy so vibrant and lush. I do have to come in here and pull the bikini teenies out. I just snap them like that because they're coming out on the inside. I'm not pulling up all my bikini teenies, just the ones that encroach on the growth in here. Same thing with the banana trees. I haven't been pulling banana trees, but I have been pruning on them heavily because, well, the leaves were down here shading everything. I had an incident, unfortunately, with the sun impatience in this spot, and that incident was well, it was, it was me and Turbo, right? Yeah, we did that, didn't we, Turbo? That's our fault. Threw a toy. That's where the ball landed. Well, the ball landed back there, and for some reason I said, go get it. I, I would rather him go back there than me, and he leapt 
landed there, went through, and at least he didn't run right through. He jumped through the spot he had already damaged, so that was good. That'll be fine. It'll fluff back up. Just needs some time. A few more days that should be <laughs> looking right again. Right now it's just, well, you know, it had a 110-pound Labrador on it. Oh, I was really hoping this would be in bloom for the garden tour, but it looks like we just missed it. The one day there aren't flowers on it. This is the Summerific Candy Crush Hardy Hibiscus, Hibiscus Machetos. I transplanted this in the early spring. It was planted down over here underneath the Heptacodium. And the last couple of years, it just it wasn't getting the sun come this time of year when the sun is a little bit lower in the sky and things are a lot more shaded back here in the afternoon. So I decided to put it over here and it's doing great, especially considering it was just transplanted this year. It's a little bit hard to see. I think I need to prune this piece of bamboo up. The bamboo is supposed to be growing back behind everything, not up here in the front. If I were to cut that out, that would probably open things up and it would look a lot better, maybe. But you get the idea, right? That should max out around four, four and a half feet maximum. And a nice round ball with giant pink. They have really big bubblegum pink flowers on them. It's a very pretty one. I'm not always crazy about the machetos, hardy hibiscus, something about the leaves. It's just kind of drab and dry looking, but that one, specifically the Summerific Candy Crush, is one that I do really, really, really like. I don't think there's anything to report on else over here other than that the dune grass is looking great. I love the dune grass. Very tall this year. I don't remember its seed heads coming up this high. Like, look at that. That's all the way up there. Especially when I hold it up high. Oh, uh, this Thai giant did not appreciate the flooding. Not a casualty, but I think that it just ended up getting drenched. Oh, Persephone. It actually has flowers on it for a July garden tour. That never happens. They aren't open all the way, but you get the idea. See that? I think they'll be open some more tomorrow. This crinum lily has put on a show this year like I have never seen. I was going to divide this up last year, and I decided to wait until this year, and then I forgot about it, and I'm really glad that I forgot about it. They take such a long time to get established. At least, I think that's more like the further north you are. So that might just be a zone 6b 7a thing there aren't a ton that are hardy in this area so it's really exciting when they get to this mature size from end to end this clump is probably eight to nine feet somewhere in there and these flower heads on this one on the persephone are if you were to stake them and have them standing upright they're close to six feet tall probably five and a half feet is what i'm guessing something like that although the ground is raised up slightly right here so we'll say five foot that's impressive. The thing with the crinums is that when you just have the one, then hopefully, once they're big and established, you'll get one big bloom stalk out of them. Usually gets bigger and bigger every year until they reach full maturity. And the flowers last for about a day, and then they fall off. Well, they wilt down, then they have the new ones that open up, and they continue to put on a show from the inside for several days. But that's it. So you get like a week to a week and a half max when you just have the one plant. But the larger and more established the clump gets, it's just been shooting up new uh, stalks like all over the place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's had seven on it so far this year. It's the most it's ever had. And I'm pretty sure I saw, I thought I saw another one down low that wasn't coming up. That might just be in my head though. I'm not sure. I think that maybe, yeah, maybe I made that up. I thought that there was another one coming up though. It's nice. Usually in the July garden tour, there's no Persephone. You don't get to see it because it usually blooms right when the June garden tour comes out is when it starts to put up the stalk. And then by the time the July garden tour comes out, it's done flowering. It's not the best of flowers I've ever looked. Partially also because it's evening. So the flowers are shutting down and closing up on it. And this is the very end of it. But just think every single year, just be more and more and more out of there. Such a great plant, even when they're not in flower. Big, beautiful, green, glossy, strappy leaves. Very beachy, tropical, shiny, and sturdy. You want a sturdy plant, get a crinum lily. They last for a long time. Over here, it, well, I don't know, just look at it. It looks good, right? <laughs> what else to say? The sun and patients are doing well. I have some roeos planted in the front here, but the sun and patients are coming down far enough that I clearly didn't even need to plant these roeos down front. But I think it looks nice having that added color and texture there and it's actually helping to hold some of the soil back which is nice because when the soils get watered heavily have the erosion so that's helping with that up above there the hedicium flaming torches they haven't bloomed yet 
but I have a feeling in the next day or so these things should be looking very fun, very tropical, and very, very, very orange. <sighs> Overheated again, and I <laughs> don't remember where I left off, so uh, shut this off and I'll just keep talking about some of the plants. I know there's a ginger over here that I don't think had bloomed by the last garden tour. You still got flowers on you? Yeah? There they are. They're starting to age out. They're being blocked by this coconut palm. When they first opened, they were a really nice deep red, and then they age out to this really pretty pink color. I'm really liking it. I want to say uh, those are sangria. The Kurkuma sangria, the ones that are up there on the hill that I about earlier, are the Benrai Red. And then this one over here is Sweet Memory. I thought it was an orange torch. I was wrong. It's Sweet Memory. Only has two flowers on it this year. Uh, had some dieback apparently, but each growth is putting up a couple more stocks, so that's good. It had three or four growths on it last year, so I was expecting it to do more this year, but instead it just put up two, and uh, now it's putting up two more, so it's okay. At least it survived the winter. I must have done something wrong with it. I don't know. I generally always overwinter them the same, but eh, maybe I waited too long to bring it outside. That probably has something to do with it. Over here, things are doing pretty well. The Pakistakis and the Persian Shields. I love coming over here and seeing these in this planter. And some, and some issues over here keeping the milkweed watered. But it's okay, it's still alive. I just need to cut that back. It'll flush back out. Have a banana in here. I think we talked about that in the last garden tour. A Musa Florida that overwintered in this pot. And it's looking great. Has really nice variegation on it. Much better than this one. This Musa Florida, it's just pathetic doesn't have much variegation on it at all. I think that with this one, I need to come in and cut back a lot of the foliage and move it into more sun. That would be my guess. And over here, this is my repot rehab area. The coconut palm, that's new. It was field dug, so it didn't have a lot of roots on it. So that's why it's over here where they're just getting morning sun and afternoon shade. It's doing okay, keeping it nice and moist. So it's starting to um, open up some more. It's starting to open up a uh, new spear, so that's very encouraging. The croton, it's love and life, but it does, it needs a new pot. Actually, it's pots fine. I just don't like the potting mix that it has. That's why that's over there. It's going to be too hot for the next couple weeks for repots. That's kind of, I think what I need to say here is I miss the window for a lot of the repots. Some of them are going to have to wait a couple more weeks till things cool down some more. And there are some other things that have changed over here. I don't know, can anybody, can you, can you guess? Can you not guess? Can you see what's different over here? Is it even that important to remember? Probably not. Not something I expect people to pay that much attention to. So these deck planters, that's these two blue rectangular planters. I originally had these planted up with red dragon wing begonias and a whole bunch of vinca, the Mayan sunset crazy tunias, and various vinca. And when the caladiums came up, they ended up being the red caladiums that I'm just not a big... Here they are, right here. I just... In the next video, I'm going to talk about it a lot, so I won't go over it too much in this one. But essentially, I just really did not like how these containers looked. That was just too much red. I felt like everything that was in the containers, things were just fighting with each other. So I picked up some more of the Pakistakis Ludia. One right there, one right there. I popped two in each one of these containers. I think they're going to be more fitting because they'll come out and the, kind of envelop the base of the U. And one Strobilanthes, that's the Persian Shield. I put one on the edge of each container because that's all I had. And the same thing with those compact pink, compact hot pink Sun Patience. I only put one in each container because that's all I had. And then a Creeping Jenny over the front, which will have a more tidy formal appearance than the mess that was the crazy tunias they just they just didn't look good in here like i said that'll all be in next week's video it's just to me this is much more calm and peaceful i'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled for another one of these sun patients two more because the only thing that bothers me is that the pink being just right there it's it needs to be evened out by having it on both sides but for right now this is fine i can probably still find a couple more of those this is the variegated tie that was in a video, I don't know, sometime in the last few weeks. It has responded very well to being moved over here and getting lots of water and love. It was looking a little bit rough, not too bad after shipping. And uh, it's starting to look good again. So I think that that's probably going to get a repot here fairly soon. But again, I'm going to wait 
at least a couple weeks just paying attention to the forecast. This is an extra that the seller sent. It was just dug right out of the garden and it's put up one, two, three leaves. Well, two, getting ready to open the third, so it's responding well. It's good. It's starting to do something. And these are all more curcumas. These are Banrai red corms. The ones that I had in the ground just weren't doing much. <laughs> so I ordered some more because I thought that maybe the squirrels had gotten to them. So that now I'm, I don't know, I'll have a whole bunch of extras. Nothing wrong with that. Love having some extras. Ah, uh, seminal pink hibiscus. This isn't the best that it's looked. You just wait. I think the video after this or sometime in the next few weeks, I'm doing a video about hibiscus. This thing has been blooming non-stop. The fertilizer that I've been using for these this year is just killing it. it in a good way. Killing it as far as keeping the plants healthy. I'm loving the firmness of the plant, of the leaves. Nothing's floppy. Nothing's crispy. There's hardly ever anything yellow or miscolored in here and just tons and tons and tons of blooms non-stop. This thing's always covered in flowers. Well, except for right now while I'm telling you about it, but usually lots of flowers. It's also later in the day and we've been having storms, so and they're looking a little bit rough because of that. This thing just does not want to bloom. Vigorous tropical orange sun patient. It's just, none of them are blooming. I don't know why. I'm going to hit them with a blooming fertilizer. I. It's, I don't. I can't attribute it to sunlight because I have some that are getting part sun and some that are getting full sun. They're just not doing anything this year, which is just stupid. I've had a lot of you tell me that yours do that, but it hasn't been an issue for me before. But this year, nothing. They're growing, but not flowering. And I, I don't. I, if they're not gonna flower, I don't want them. They gotta go. Oh, freckles. Frex is looking good. I always love the freckles, Croton. Nothing to report there. It gotta repot in the spring, and it's it's doing its thing. It's looking pretty good. Oh, but Lobularia. Finally. All this alyssum that I planted underneath this Dracaena. Finally. Starting to do something. When it gets really hot, they tend to lull out. But the newer types aren't really supposed to do that, but the, they did. Those are Snow Princess alyssum and they've just been sitting there green and looking kind of dumb, <laughs> to be honest, for the last six weeks. But we had a cool period in the middle of July, and I think those cooler nights help trigger them to go back into flower, which they shouldn't need. That's the whole point of them being an improved variety, but that's the only thing I can figure. I'm just happy they're going to start flowering again. The Gassia Palms, they're looking so much better this year than last year. They have some fronds that are rough around the edges. That's just their old winter growth. They're slow growers, these Gassia Palms. Because of that, when they have their old winter foliage on them, you just, I've learned you got to sit around and learn to love it because they're not going to push out new fronds really fast, like with an Adenidia or a Foxtail, where it's normal for them to have some fronds that look pretty bad from the winter prior or the Alexander back there. No big deal. They start throwing out new fronds, those old ones come right off, but not with these. At least not in my experience. I'm only getting like three to five max fronds out of these this year. That's going to be my guess. Right now, I've gotten two to three out of most of the trunks, so I'm anticipating hopefully another two to three out of each one of them. But because of that, even though it's not much, they have put on enough growth that all this is new. I mean, they didn't put on all this growth this year, but they had the old brown leaf scars down to, I believe, right here or right here, and maybe right here or right there on this trunk. And it's so exciting when you can pull these things, when those are loose enough to come off. The Gassia Palm, I have learned, holds on to these old leaf bases for a long, long, long time, and that drives me crazy. So I was very happy when I came out here and I gave them a little tug that they, for the most part, I did I went a little bit heavy with it, but for the most part, they popped right off. It was messy. Messier. Most palms, they just snap off and it's a perfectly clean thing. These left behind some old stuff, but I didn't have to tug really hard, and that's how you know it's okay to do. The more trunk they get on them, just the better they look. And isn't that, like, look from here to right there, that's a whole lot of trunk to have opened up. And to me, that just makes them look so much nicer. I'm liking these more this year than last year. Last year, I was really on the fence about them this year, especially now that I'm getting some more trunk out of this one over here. And they're responding well as far as their growth is concerned. Last year, they just weren't doing anything. And I think that's because when they were delivered, I had to repop them. So they also had to settle into their new container mix and whatnot. It probably has something to do with this big frond up there. That's looking really good. Look at that nice lush green. Very pretty. Oh, the Dracaena. I'd like to find a spot for it where it could get more sun 
and more appreciation. Right now it's just tucked back here in this corner. I don't think that's right for this plant. It really deserves something that's out where you can see it and appreciate it because it has such a beautiful trunk. Now look, you can't, you, you don't even know it's there. I need to figure something out with that. The mule palms, I realize I don't talk about them anywhere near as much as I should. I have one right here, the other one's down there behind the Robolini palm. They've been doing really well this year. I need to come in and make these leaf base cuts further. Oh, well, that's not good. We're not supposed to do that. <laughs> not from that far inside, from down below, from the oldest leaf base and up, sure. It's been dropping some of those and starting to show some trunk. You can see that down there, right? But not from all the way, what the, oh my God. Scared the crap out of me. Like, what is this wet rubbery thing on my leg? It's not supposed to be here. Get back in the pool, Go over there. Well, that one had some damage on it, which is also my fault because at one point I had the hose draped in here just soaking the pot and I think it was pulling on it too much, but it shouldn't just pull it right out from the base. I think that actually this is just, it's maturing and I think some of this older stuff is, whoa. Okay, so we've got some ants. Need to probably do something about that. Wonder if that has something to do with that other one pulling right out. I'm gonna need to keep an eye on that. I love ants, but I don't want them farming inside of the palm trees. You know, my whole point there is that they've been doing really well this year. Last year I just barely got any growth out of them and I was attributing that to them needing a fresh potty mix. I had them planted up in something that was very heavy coconut base and there was just nothing in it that I think was doing them any good. It was, I believe, in a Spoma blend, which just doesn't work for me and my plants. The Spoma mix, not a fan of it. Anything I have used that for has not grown well unless I fertilize nonstop. And I think that that is what's made the difference with the mule palms this year, with getting lots of nice new growth out of both of them, is that I'm fertilizing basically every single time they get watered. It depends on the day. The red hose that's over there is a one inch hose. Has a lot of water pressure, so I use that one when I just need to water the plants. Can do it really quick. Orange hose is hooked up to fertilizer, so every time I water with that one, they get a low dose fertilizer. So most days they do get fertilizer, but if I'm in a hurry or something, maybe a couple days a week, they don't. And I think that, again, what I was saying is I think that that's what's doing it for them is they're getting fertilized basically constantly. So that's something I need to remember when I'm doing my repots in a few weeks when things have cooled down that I don't think they've just miraculously improved. I'm pretty sure that's it's just the fertilizer, so I should still probably repot these. Glad we talked about that, or I would have completely forgotten about it. Eureka palm. Lovely. Love this palm tree. Don't, why aren't these more popular? I mean, they're common. It's not a hard plant to get a hold of, but I just feel like I don't ever see people talk about them anymore as far as the houseplant palms go. And I can think of a lot of reasons why, but to me, compared to the majority of the palm trees that you see for sale at the like the big box stores, Majesty Palms, and like foxtail palms and queen palms, this is a much better plant for indoors in comparison to those. You get a lot more time with them. But you know, they are heat lovers, they need a lot of light, but they'll they're so worth it. The time and effort you put into them, it really it pays off quickly because they're a fairly fast grower. They have these beautiful golden trunks on them and I love the way that they flare out from the crowns. Just a gorgeous palm tree. I feel like I glaze over it all the time so I want to make sure to talk about it. There's the Eureka palm doing great. G gave it a heavy prune in last week's video. I like to keep the inside open and that just makes it look better so you can see the nice big trunks. I almost call them canes. They look like canes. Golden cane palm, butterfly palm, whatever you want to call it. There's a reason for that because they got big golden cane-like trunks. Baby spindle. Looking pretty good. It's been doing really good, actually. It's got one, two, three new fronds just since May, when I put this into a new pot, late May. That's pretty good. They're not the fastest of growers, so I'd say it's happy. Seems to be doing well. Also, I have a rostrata down here that I never remember to talk about. This one had some root rot last winter, so I chopped the base off and I'm restarting it in a smaller container. It's pushing out new growth. That's very encouraging. You want to see them push out that new growth. That's how you know that they're doing okay. I'm trying to make sure I talk about the palm trees. I'm really bad about glazing over the palm trees. Pretty sure. There's nothing about the queen palm. It's a queen palm. It's growing. It looks okay. It just got repotted. It's gonna need some time. Oh, parlor palm. This thing had a heavy prune in the last video. I was hoping it would have darkened up by now. It hasn't. Well, it will. 
that'll all darken up on the inside. I love this palm tree. All those fun little cute tiny trunks. That's it. That's the end of the story with that palm tree. This oncidium over here. I think I need to move to a spot where it's going to get actually maybe more light. I don't know if it's getting enough over here. Nah. There's some pretty yellowy stuff in there. It's looking rough. It's outdoors. That's oncidiums when you keep them outside. They tend to end up looking kind of rough. Oh yeah, the hydrangea trees. Just, do I even need to say anything? Just look at them. They're beautiful. Covered. They are in their prime right now. These are the vanilla strawberry or strawberry vanilla. I can never remember which. An older variety of paniculata. Panicle hydrangea. They love the sun for the most part and they have huge. I mean, look at the size of this flower head. This is massive. This isn't even one of the bigger ones. It'll continue to open up and unfurl. They have that little pink or white tip right there and then they start to turn pink on the uh, inside or towards the base of the plant. That's what we'll call it. The base of the flower and that slowly spreads to here and then they end up having a white tip on them and then they get some more green on them and they'll usually dry with a good amount of color on them too. Only downside to them being an older cultivar is that because of the size of these massive, massive panicles of flowers is that they droop. They droop very, very, very heavily. So you lose some of the nice look that you would have with like, say a limelight, limelight prime, one of those, but those don't have as large of a flower head on it. So there's a trade off, but I'd say that it's worth it. I don't mind the droopy nature of the plant when they get weighed down by the flowers because the flowers are so pretty and very fragrant. Have I ever talked about that before? Probably not because I don't remember noticing these being fragrant until the other night I was standing out here watering some plants, yes, at nighttime. It was late, they needed water, I hadn't had time to do it during the day. And everything over here was so aromatic and sweet, a very sweet honey scent, very sweet, clean smell. And I'm so happy with these this year. Last year, kind of got gypped with them because they started to open. They're maybe two weeks behind what they are right now. And then we had just a random heat spell that came out of nowhere. And oh my God, I can't say it came out of nowhere when it's July, but it had been relatively cool. And then it just was up into the hundreds and that fried them. They turned brown. So I'm going to try and remember, since we're supposed to be pushing upper 90s again here in a few days, like you can see, they get that heat damage. On them. These are the flowers that are facing where they get most of the heat and most of the sun. I want to try and remember tomorrow I'm going to be paying attention to the forecast and if they're still calling for it to be in the upper 90s for the next few days I'm going to very carefully try and scoot these over into the shade. That one won't be a big deal. I just need to take it a few feet that direction. This one's going to be more difficult. These are very heavy. These containers are I think 34 inches high and 32 inches wide at the top. They're very heavy. Ceramic and the bases of them are loaded up with gravel and brick, all kinds of materials to weigh them down because the storms were blowing them over. So uh, I, I can do it. I moved them in the springtime when all this got repaved. I can do it again. Just have to do it very carefully and uh, methodically. Because last time I moved this one, I moved it to right there. I can't do that this time because there's still a lot of sun right there. It's going to have to go further back. And they're too big to put any kind of shade over. I could drape shade cloth across them, but that's just going to pull the foliage down and make them look all smush and weird. I don't think that that's probably what I should be doing with them. So I'm going to try and remember to do something with them. These were underplanted either late last month or early this month. I don't even remember, but it was late. Usually I do this in the mid to late spring. And I just, I don't know, I was so behind because of other things going on in life. But I think that they turned out beautifully. I love the Pakistakis Ludia in here and the combination in here with the uh, Neon Rose, I believe, and Hot Coral Sun Patience and just a couple of Vista Bubblegums in each one. I think it's a great color pairing and it really pops and... I wasn't sure about it because the hydrangeas lend themselves to something more cottagey, potentially even something more formal. And then you have just this burst of tropical underneath them, but I think it is working out fairly well. There's some contrast, but it's nothing too drastic. And as the flowers up here start to pink up, I think that those will blend together very, very, very nicely. And they already are pairing together very, very nicely. I've just, this is so good. So good. I could stand here and talk about these all day. I'd just be repeating myself nonstop, but they're so pretty and always covered in pollinators. I thought there was a bee there. There wasn't a bee. I just thought there was one over there. 
Whatever, take my word for it. You know what I'm saying. Oh, I, at some point, I think I left off over here, and then the camera overheated. You get it. It looks good. Bananas are growing, doing their thing. Sable miners, looking good. So much growth on these, which is a huge relief because, well, the other one's hidden back there. Uh, they had so much dieback last winter. So I'm happy to see that they're coming back with a lot of vigor because I wasn't sure how they were going to do. Oh, no, what happened to you? If the storm has weighed that one down. This is a brand new leaf opening up on the Pharaoh's Dream Colocasia from Brian's Botanicals. They say that this one is supposed to be cold hardy into zone 6, which would be amazing. I'm so, look at that leaf. That is so pretty. As these leaves mature, it's probably going to take a few more leaves, but these veins are supposed to be very, very, very white. And to me, they look a lot like a Gloriosum as far as the pattern goes, but hardy into zone 6. How freaking awesome is that? Supposedly hardy into zone six. We will find out. I love this plant so much more than the Redemption. The Redemption, now that I've grown it and been watching it grow, I think it's an interesting plant, particularly the newest leaves as they open up and they start off with that white and then it gets more and more pink and then that pink fades into a green and emerald green and that turns black. They look cool, but it's just not for me. I won't be planting those next year. I like the green. In fact, I've even been debating digging up the Redemption and scooting the Pharaoh's Dream over while it'll still have a few weeks to adjust to being moved. I don't think I'm going to do that though because right now I have the Pharaoh's Dream planted close enough to the Sable Miners that when I mulch the Sable Miners it should overlap the base of the Pharaoh's Dream to help add some extra protection. And this whole area here needs a good amount of cleanup. That's largely just because the cannas have gone insane, absolutely insane. The ones that are all in front, everything you're seeing right now is completely shading the growth that I want to have that's back towards the wall of the house over here. And they're done flowering, so I'm probably going to come in here and cut out the majority of all this that's in the front to let some light back there to the ones that, like I said, that I want to have around their back against the wall of the house, because this is just, it's too much. I think that that looks... It looks okay, but it would look better if that were open back up again. So there's some more space in there. You can see how everything's just leaning forward. And it's starting to choke out the uh, colocasias that are in here. They're, they need to be back. They're supposed to be standing straight up. The storms and everything. And then these are old stocks that have flowers. So they're not really... They don't have much going on as far as growth vigor is concerned. That's not right, the right word. Health. They're just not as sturdy. It's older growth. I'm just going to prune it back. Last year, I did something similar because they were just so vigorous that I was like, eh, I should probably get rid of some of these. And I dug them up and transplanted them. I don't know if I'll be doing that this year because I think I've run out of people that need <laughs> or would want the cannas. But, oh, but look at the humming. Man, well, now I can't get rid of them. Oh, well, I'm not going to be getting rid of them. I'm just going to be allowing the ones in the back to get some light and have more flowers. So that'll be even better. We're just going to cut them down then that'll open things up again. I think it'll look a lot more tidy that way. So you can't just let them grow over the front of everything. That doesn't look right. And if I don't do it the next year, this entire area is going to be absolutely nothing but cannas. As much as I love the cannas, I don't love them that much. That's, that's overkill. Heliconias, they're looking pretty good. Lots of growth coming out of the Chaconianas in here. Good amount of flowering. I have my Hirsuta over there, it needs to be repotted. It hasn't done much because it needs a fresh blend. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on with it. Most of them are looking pretty good. I had four more that were supposed to come in the mail from Nature Hills Nursery. I ordered them. I don't even know when. I think it's been about six, seven weeks since I placed the order. I emailed them there, just like, oh, it's too hot to ship. I'm like, I don't actually think that that's true because it was hotter when they shipped them last summer, but okay. The idea with those is that's going to have the heliconia right there, heliconia right there, then one uh, right here, one right here, one right here, and one right there. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five to go in with those other two. So there'd be seven of them, just be heliconias everywhere in here. Maybe they'll send them and I can add them at some point. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm going to give it two more weeks, but then if they haven't shipped, I'm going to request a refund. And if they end up shipping them, that's great. I think it'll look really good over there. The heliconias that are in these two containers aren't looking as good because... Do you remember the big beach ball? That huge one? I think I just deflated it in the last video. With those storms that we've been having, it was blowing it out of the pool. And it just kept blowing it right over the heliconias and smashing them. It was just crunching them right down. 
which is another reason that I deflated that beach ball and got it out of there. It was mostly there to deter ducks and things from landing in the pool. It did a great job at that, and uh, I don't just don't think it's necessary anymore, especially since it was smashing my plants. Oh, blizzard! Alocasia blizzard. Don't think I talked about this in the last garden tour. It's doing well. I am so hesitant to move it to more sun, but I think that it would actually probably do better. It's rooted well into this container. So this was just in a four inch pot before I potted up into this 10 inch container. It doesn't by any means need a repot. It is suckering though. I have a new one right there. Another baby right there. Another baby popping up right there. Looks like there was one back there that broke off. It's been great. It's been vigorous. I've just been so nervous to give it more light. But you can see the side that was back there against the pot, how it has that wonk to it. So it would probably be smart for me to find a different spot for it where it will get more sunlight. Like I said, I just keep worrying that I'm going to scorch it. And right now wouldn't be the time anyways to in a heat spell, but in a couple weeks. I need to move that. Cool down number six for this video. I think that might be a new record. I don't know. what That's not sunny. And it's only like 92. It actually is feeling pretty good out here at this point. So I'm wondering if maybe I'm just low on memory or something. The Lutea. I don't know if I talked about this or not. Well, it's new for this spot. I had the black coral over here, which is one of my favorites. I'm saying this as a follow-up to when I was talking about the Redemption, that I do like the dark foliage on Colocasias, especially the black coral and the sapphire geckos and those from the ones from Brian's Botanicals. I love them. Didn't love it over here, though. There was a beautiful, large, tropical rose sun patient that's a variegated sun patient right behind this in the pygmy date palm planter. I didn't talk about the pygmy date palm. It's looking pretty good. And a possum or something came in here and just dug up the entire root ball, which was a big bummer because that was, to me, a highlight of the spot. And it's weird to me. Not, I, I know it's weird, but it's odd to me not having that plant there because just traditionally, I have always planted one of those tropical rose sun patients in this pot so it just I, don't know, I, I didn't like it and things were too dark having the black coral over here in this spot even though the spot isn't necessarily shady it's sunny enough to keep a sun patient blooming and it, the fulsome bromeliads are looking good i have an orchid over here but that's only because the bromeliads overlap the foliage on the orchid which is looking great isn't it the sesame beautiful phalaenopsis things just needed to be lightened up over here so i moved the lutea over here in place of that black coral and i really think it looks good this is the one plant that i will probably make the exception to as far as repotting while it's hot outside because it is so overgrown in its pot that its pot is rock hard so it would potentially do more damage to keep waiting to repot re it than to just go ahead and do it allocasias colocasias i just flipped that around colocasias and alocasias they can be brats when you repot them if you mess their roots up but this one its roots are going to be so solid in there that i just can't imagine that it's going to have any setbacks at all i just need to get more soil in its container because right now i'm having to give this tons and tons and tons of water which really shouldn't have to do with an alocasia casia jeez can never get that one right. It doesn't really matter. You'll know what I'm saying. As far as projects are concerned, coming up here in August, I'm going to be coming into this whole area, gutting it, cleaning it out. I'm probably going to relay this pathway or figure something else out here and turn this whole area over here into a part sun to shade garden. I'm really looking forward to getting that done. Oh, the needle pumps. I didn't talk about those. They're there. They're looking good. Actually, really good. These things are getting freaking huge. That frond, that's taller than me. So it's you know, probably 6'2", six 6'3", six I'm guessing. This one over here is not quite as tall. This one gets some more sun, so it's maintained more of a bushy, compact growth. This one gets just a little bit more shade, so it has some more elongation to it. This is a big deal. It takes a long, long time to get needle pumps to put on much growth, especially further north. So 6B, 7A, I do have to protect these every winter. We have a cold snap where I have to put a couple bags over them and have some lights that go on the inside. Uh, you, the needle pumps are supposed to be hardy to like negative 10. It's just not worth it to me to risk them defoliating because they only put out a few new fans, few new fronds a year. So why even take that risk? It just keeps them looking nicer to go ahead and bag them when it drops below like 5 degrees. What if there's going to be ice or anything like that? 
And I think that doing things that way has really paid off. It's kept them nice and big. Uh, the whole point there being I have these big beautiful needle palms over here and then everything that's around it just looks like total garbage. So this is the last project that I've been waiting to get to. I've talked about since like 2020. I have been working my way around the garden in sections. I started with getting things really good over there and then over there and doing it in segments. And all that's left now is this over here. I want to go from this doorway, get things trimmed out, put in maybe some perennials. There's not much space to work with there, but get it looking better to where it makes more sense, figure out something with this adenidia palm, and then come down there and build a little shade garden and part sun to shade garden around that bird bath that's back there. So that's what's on the agenda for the month of August is to get all that taken care of. I think that's going to be fun. Get a lot of planting done and just have things look nice and clean over there. Makes sense. Have these big, beautiful plants, but I never want to go over there and look at them. Or at least I don't ever want to go over there and show them to anybody because it just looks so junky and terrible. That's just a part of having a garden. There's always projects and things going on. I need to get all of these transplanted after I'm talking about not digging things up and not planting things because it's too hot. Just moving caladiums around. It had to be done. They didn't look good in those containers. I'm going to stick them back more towards the shade. I think they'll look better behind the impatience down there. I'm thinking. They usually do. Usually when I buy those assorted packs of caladiums, there's a lot of white and color to them. But this year it's just been all red. And that's my least favorite of the bunch as far as caladiums are concerned. To me, they look fake. I'll be planting them behind other things where I think they'll look better. I just don't want them out front as a statement plant, I want them behind things as an accent. Does that make sense? The, oh, we didn't talk about those. Those are hard to get to. I'm gonna try and get a decent zoom on them from over here when it's getting a little dark. Be able to get much of a look. Oh, there they are. The one on the left looking better than the one on the right. I don't know why. They get about the exact same amount of sunlight, but there they are. The, there is a flower on that vigorous tropical orange sun patient. So that one's at least blooming. The Mayan Sunset Crazy Tunia, that one that was in this container just rotted out and died. That one's not doing much. I think they have too much Calibrac DNA in them for the sun that's over there with that moisture they have to keep up for the ginger. Though this Crazy Tunia has been doing great. Looks pretty good. A little bit yellow, but otherwise looking better than all the other ones. This is my first year with them. I don't think I'll use them again. In containers that really have to sit out in the sun with all this pavement around them, I'm probably going to go back to just using the Vistas because everything else I've been trying just hasn't been working out that well. And that's it. Oh, look at how, you can see how pretty that Chrysandra looks from back here. It's a different kind of view. I know it's going to be grainy because I'm far away, but didn't really let you all see how that all looks from the front. The Miami planters, I think they look so good. I didn't do a trailer in them this year. That's why I added the Lasmachia to them at the last minute, which I don't know if that's going to end up doing anything because I waited so long, but I still think they look nice. The containers are so pretty. I just didn't want to cover them up with flowers. I just didn't think that would have looked right. Oh, pardon the prunage. I've got some, got some old leaves over there I need to throw away. Prunage? I think that's the word. Anyways, hey, I think that's everything. Pretty up to date with everything that's going on out here. What's been going on in the garden? Comment down below what's been going on in your garden. I'm loving how things have come out this year. And this, I'm so excited. When these bloom, this whole spot over here is going to look so freaking fantastic. The color, especially if that's not right there, and we'll be able to see all the, you'll see it. I'm sure I'll be showing it off nonstop. This is gonna be one of my favorite spots out here. It's gonna be this view right here, or really more from like up here, somewhere up here on the steps have the ginger blooms and all the prettiness from the dichondra and the trunks of the adenidias. I can't wait. It's only going to be a few days. A few more days. Those gingers will be looking great. I so everybody's doing well. I'm having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. <sighs> Starting to overheat again. That's just a last minute thing. I don't keep those there. That's just where they ended up because I needed them off the patio because the whole patio has been getting power washed nonstop. And the toilet plungers are for the liner. There's not a toilet out here. It's just when the water level went down, the liner loosened up. You use a plunger to grab onto the liner and pull the wrinkles out. And I could put that away. I just haven't gotten around to it. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.